Hi there, from the car, parked up in, I don't know what this place is called actually, but it's in Launceston, and it's like a bunch of supermarkets in a big square around a car park. But it's Easter Sunday, so apparently Costa Coffee opens on Easter Sunday, but uh, none of these other ones surrounding me do. We've got a B&M, Go Outdoors, Shoe Zone, Argos, Iceland, Poundland, Pets at Home. M&S Food Hall. So my first drive after getting the car. Maybe I should tell, tell you about um, getting the car. <clears throat> There's a woman recklessly parking in front of me. Uh, I found this car on FB Marketplace. <clears throat> I was slightly discouraged by the Arabic writing for the name of the seller, but uh, in talking to him he had like an English way of pronouncing the name which was like Akko. I think he was Iraqi, <laughs> judge, judging from what his FB profile said, like where he'd been and stuff, was like a place in Iraq, and he was a Muslim. <laughs> I didn't let that put me off though, because, you know, he was very talkative actually, all the other sellers were kind of pricks <laughs> so far. Apart from him, he actually talked to me and told me about the car and gave details. He kept <laughs> kept calling me Sir in the uh, replies and doing the, the icon that's like, like that. <laughs> So he's quite polite and amiable, friendly guy. And I planned a, a date to go and view the car. And right up on the actual day, he changed the, the time. It was going to be three o'clock, but he went, oh, by the way, actually, I've got this like uh, Dereford hospital appointment over the phone. And so could you instead come bef either before 2 p.m. or after 4 p.m.? And I'd already booked like short-term car insurance for a test drive for 3 p.m. so I was like oh god so and I was already boarding the bus when he told me this stuff which was very late and plan change so I didn't didn't like that but we made it work it just meant that because the the bus route I was on to try and get to the car like the entire bus route was actually quite a far distance from the neighborhood where the car was for viewing which is called North Prospect in Plymouth so I had to walk from Mutley Plain to North Prospect, which I've never done before, through a load of weird neighbourhoods, through a park to the Argyle Football Stadium, across the road, and then through a bunch of weird housing estates there, which were way hillier than I thought. And I had to do it faster, because I'd made time to get there at 3pm, and I hadn't made time to get there at like 1.30, which is when I ended up getting there. So I got there at 1.30, very out of breath. The weather that day was just all over the place, and met... Arco at his house and yeah he was very friendly it was weird because it was like the first time I've ever been like chatting to I guess a, a Muslim in person I guess I knew a girl called Zaki who was from the Philippines who was apparently Muslim but I don't know she didn't seem like one at all because maybe it's a Filipino thing but this guy was like full-on Iraqi Muslim guy and it's just the first time I've been especially like going in the house like an Islamic, Islamified English household. He, he kind of integrated. It was half and half. He liked to preserve his culture in private. So he'd go in his house and they had like all the Islamic scripture stuff over the kitchen door and his daughter walking through with a study book. Then you go into the living room and there's like, I thought it was like a, a Japanese style layout at first. You come in and you look at the TV and there's like a, a big flat screen TV, but like a little cushion on the floor. And I thought, that's how it was going to be to sit down or something but then go around the corner and there's a sofa and we sat on that and the tv was playing a kind of muslim tv channel which was unusual I'd, i've never seen that before and um yeah we went through all the paperwork there and outside i had a, a tiny little test drive with him and, and this car back then when i had a test drive with him sat next to me it felt so weird it was so different to the peugeot 208 the handling was different, like the clutch is at a different level, the accelerator is more sensitive, the the brake seems to be better in this car. The gears, when you're in a low gear, it won't make much of a sound that it's struggling, so you need to change up a gear. Uh, and obviously a real physical handbrake here. Um, I've been using this electronic parking brake for ages, so I have to, had to get used to, and still kind of have to get used to the physical handbrake. So I was driving through the neighborhood. I knew I wanted to get the car because it's it's a good car. It's 
quite a it's quite a good car for the for the price that I got it for, which is two thousand pounds. Most of the other cars for two thousand pounds are a lot older than this and a lot messier. So that was quite good that I found this one. I'm thinking like maybe Echo didn't quite know what he'd got, like by selling it for two thousand pounds. Because I think if I had this car, I'd sell it for like four thousand or more because it's it's in great condition. There's tiny scuffs of paint here and there on the outside. There's one thing, this thing is like it meant to be a seat rest with a compartment in it normally, but like the, the lid of it, it's meant to go there, has, it's like, it's all snapped off and he said that was kind of broken before he got the car. I'm gonna ask the mechanic if they can repair that somehow. There's nothing else really wrong with it that I can think of. Some of the tires, like the tread on the front tires looks a bit worn so I have to check that out in the mechanic and see if it needs new tires. I feel like the back tires are winter tires because it comes on the dash telling you like winter tires don't exceed 55 miles per hour when it was on the dual carriageway back there and <laughs> that's kind of disconcerting. I didn't know that that was a problem with winter tires because I assume winter tires have better grip and I like the idea of better grip. Whereas the front tires, I think parts of them are getting near the legal limit, so I might have to buy two new front tires or something. Yeah, so I did a little test drive thing. There's a guy kind of parked out, like outside my car, smoking, facing me, which is disconcerting to get used to all these weird things you see out the window. And yeah, so I I went in and and paid for the car after we checked it out I like I had a checklist to go through so I could check everything and he was very talkative and responsive and explained to me like everything's all right like I just drove this car all the way up to Birmingham and back so this car's been to Birmingham recently and it survived the journey oh Mitsubishi ASX seen a lot of them today that was one of the cars I wanted two liter though so I got persuaded out of it by my dad this is a 1.6 liter turbo manual diesel and it's a sedan. Well, it's classed as a hatchback every time you see stats on it, but it's clearly a sedan. <laughs> but if you open the, the back boot, there's actually quite a lot of space in there for a sedan. It's quite roomy. My first drive with the car, I was going to take it very slow because I was so it was so alien this car. Um, I almost thought that it was going to be so strange that I wouldn't be able to get it back home. But I took a back road, I didn't take the main road. So there was a back road that could take me to the A386 out of Plymouth North to home and that. The back road was called like Ham Road or Ham Drive. And it is home to like six mini roundabouts all on one street. And then a crossroads. So I managed to get up to Ham Drive and start driving up it. And then my only major like iffy bit of the trip, like accidentally bit of the trip, was there was the crossroads after the mini roundabouts. I didn't quite know what was happening. I was wondering whether I was in the wrong or the person oncoming was in the wrong. But basically, there was a red light at the crossroads. I waited. The red light turned to green for me. I started to go. I got into the junction of the crossroad and someone straight ahead of me was oncoming. Like they were, even though it was green for me, they were, they were coming into the junction. They were facing me. And I had to brake suddenly, like, inside the junction, and I had, like, a surprised expression on my face. They had a surprised expression on their face, like a man and his wife who was driving. And <laughs> so I just stopped for a moment, and then they went off to my left. But it was green for me. I'm, I'm guessing it was, like, one of those crossroad junctions where you have to wait in the m middle as if there's a reservation to turn right. But they just... When it went for green for me, they it obviously went green for them, but they just went straight in front of me, like, really fast. And I was not prepared for that. So that was the main problem with it. After that, I got on to the A386. I was kind of nervous doing everything. I just knew I had to follow the road markings to stay in lane for straight ahead, to stay on the road and not accidentally veer into a, a lane that had, like, a this is left turn only, it's going to just take you off the road you're on, marking. And I managed to get it all the way up to home, and it was, I was really surprised that I managed to do it. I got it parked up and I was like, like, oh my god, I, I managed to do it. But then, when I parked up in my village, 
found a place to park it. Then I had another big headache, another big problem that prevented me from getting out of the car for like a good 15 to 20 minutes. I think I'd, I'd gone to park on the right side of a road. Plenty of space for people to walk by, no white yellow lines or anything on the road. And then I wanted to get cl get the car closer. I think I might have turned the ignition off or something, but I wanted, I, I was on a hill facing down and you know how some people say, you want to set the car in first gear so the car doesn't roll down the hill in the night because it's better than handbrake. And you want to t maybe turn your wheels to face like towards the direction you've, you've parked on so that it doesn't roll down the hill or anything. So I went to turn the wheel and it, it clicked and got stuck. Apparently this is a common thing my dad has told me. The, the wheel, from me turning it right to try and dry steer while the car was off, it clicked and got stuck. And then the ignition key just would not start the car, would not ignite the car. So <laughs> I was there for ages, like turning the ignition key, nothing happened. Turning the ignition key, lights come on the halfway ignition, turn the ignition key, nothing happened, and I was like, what has happened, has a handbrake, is it the handbrake has failed, has the car failed, is the starter motor broken, S just now that I've got in, I was like texting Echo to go, oh, what's this, this this has happened, he's like, oh, I'm sorry sir, this never happened, never happened to me while I've in, in the car, it must be something in the manual, you'll work it out, oh, yeah, I must remember to turn the, the first lights on when I start off. I keep forgetting to do that. Yeah, damn. That's something I can't remember to do. And yeah, I was turning the key ignition, nothing would work. Eventually, I got my phone out and I had somehow got internet on my phone. I looked up on YouTube, you know, steering wheel lock, ignition doesn't go. And one short video came up for a different car. I was like, okay, whatever, I'll watch it. And he's like, turn the steering wheel toward the direction you turned it when it got stuck. Hold it in that position tightly, turn it a bit more maybe, but not super far else you'll f fuck up the steering. And then turn the key in the ignition and then the ignition should work. And he says you can also go left and right and wiggle it while you're doing it. And dad confirmed when I got home that that's something that happened to him as well. And I was just like, before that I was like, what is this? The car's broken now I've got it back home. This is so devastating. Then I finally got it solved. The manual didn't help. I was looking through the manual for ages. That didn't have anything. <laughs> Don't know what that noise is. Motorcycle. And yeah, so that's the story of me getting the car home. Uh, finally secured it and went, okay, it's fine, it's good, I've got it home. Went back in and then the next day I got the car taxed, which is £35 a year, by the way, which is great for me because fuck taxes. It basically means the government's only stealing £35 a year from me. Which is good because other cars you might pay 300 a year or something. Maybe it's some bullshit Greta Thunberg emissions thing. Because I saw something on this car, it's ULES compliant. I don't give a fuck about that. ULES do not comply to ULES. Blade Runners for the win. Anyway, yeah, I don't want to go. I'm really put off going to the cities because of those clean air zone fucking things that have popped up out of nowhere. Basically, you're just being charged for existing. It's another tax. Since then, that was the, me getting the car home from Plymouth. Since then, uh, the day after, I had a drive up to Willsworthy Ranges. And you'll see that video because I'll upload it after this one. That was just a short drive up in the countryside sort of thing. And the day after that, which was yesterday, it was quite fun. I went up to Yelverton Aerodrome and parked up and kind of washed the car a bit. Actually, when I was home, I parked under a tree and there was bird poop on the front of the car. I was like, fuck. So I, I did some cleaning while I was in my village, spraying the car down and, and rubbing it off with kitchen roll and stuff. Get rid of the bird poop. So the lesson I should learn from that is don't park under a tree if you can. Because I think not only do you get bird poop, sometimes you get those like catkin seeds and like seeds rain down on the car and some of them are sticky and they get stuck to it. And yeah, that was yesterday's trip to Yelverton Aerodrome. Today's trip, I wanted to do something more challenging and it is slightly busier today. It's Easter Sunday and I went to Launceston, which with my driving instructor, I've technically been driving to Launceston like every week <laughs> up to my test through most of this year 
So I know Launceston now. I'm quite familiar with it, but it is more challenging than Plymouth City by far. So I might go and challenge myself on a couple roads that way. Um, oh, yesterday when I was coming back from Yelverton Aerodrome, I there's there's a rule about going on medium roundabouts, which I've learnt, which is you stay left to go straight ahead. Stay in the left lane if you want to go straight ahead. And then don't indicate until you're about to leave your exit, then indicate. This roundabout in Tavistock, the Hellmouth town, outside Morrison's, I didn't see the worn road markings very well, but there were two arrows and I was in the left lane to go straight ahead, as you do, but this was an exception to the rule. Because the full rule is, it's left lane to go straight ahead unless road markings tell you otherwise. And I did not see these road markings. And yeah, basically you had to be in the right lane to go straight ahead on this particular roundabout. So that was a pain in the ass, I didn't know that. And I got beeped at by a big SUV that was overtaking me in the center lane. Think, I suppose they were thinking I was going in the supermarket and I was coming back in to merge with them, not knowing that I was not in the right lane. So I need to look at road markings approaching medium roundabouts in case they tell me straight ahead is actually the right lane. <laughs> so I'll do some more challenging things today. I'll show you where I am. It's quite pleasant at the moment. I'm in this uh, car parking lot here. Lots of people have come out this Easter Sunday to try and get in these shops and they keep looking in the doors and realizing that they can't actually get in any of them. <laughs> because all of them are closed except Costa Coffee back there. So <laughs> yeah, I think they want to get into BM BNM mostly, but it's closed, so. But it's nice and quiet for me to do a bay parking and I'm really surprised that I managed to do this bay parking. Also, I've inset, I've got my blind spot mirrors now. I've stuck them on, I bought them and stuck them on, that's what that is. Which gives me a great view, as you can see, for parking. There we go. Gives me a different view from the wing mirror for parking. Helps me stay in the lines. And look, I parked within the lines today. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I was just a little bit too far back, but when I got out of the car, I thought, I'm not going to be in these lines. And I got out and I was, and I was like, oh. Because this was a reverse bay park, which I think is my hardest manoeuvre. Actually, the harder one is the reverse left bay park. This is a reverse right bay park. So this is slightly easier, I guess. I think when this supermarket car park is more packed, I'll be doing forward bay parkings because they're a lot easier. Anyway, now time to challenge myself and hope I don't run over any pheasants or people crossing the road or whatever. I need to do more meeting situations in this car so i'll get on that that's what's happening with me i have a car it's crazy uh the next video i upload will probably be me at willsworthy ranges so back in time by two days and i didn't take any film at yelverton aerodrome so yeah i need to start i need to get this car to the mechanic for a checkup soon and then i need to once the easter shit goes away all these bank holidays I need to get back on job hunting also, I'm half a tank, so I need to get fuel. Thank you for watching.